I'm Sal back with another video. Today we're doing a little tune up on my SR here. So let's run a little rough at idle, uh, giving me some backfires on hard acceleration. So I just want to run through, make sure timing looks good, get a new fuel pump on here, new spark plugs, just trying to do uh, what I can easily to try and get this running a little bit better. So yeah, new fuel filter, check the throttle position sensor, check our cam timing, and then uh, new spark plugs. Let's get right into it. Okay, first thing I want to do today is uh, replace the fuel filter. It sits right here. Uh, pretty easy to get to. I'm not worried about getting this top clamp, obviously, but the bottom one um, is just really hard to get under there. I'm replacing it with this ISR 300ZX filter. It's a little bit bigger than the stock S13 filters, and uh, it fits right into place. It looks like that's what was in there beforehand, but I don't know the last time it was changed, so I'm just gonna put a new one in. Okay, so I've never changed a fuel filter before, but I do know that the first thing to do is pull the fuel pump fuse while the engine is running so that you can get as much gas out of the lines as you can and relieve the pressure. Sometimes this car has a difficult time on warm starts, but never as bad as it is here. I guess it's just another reason to make sure timing and everything is set correctly. But finally got started and then pulled the fuse. For my car, the fuse box is still right up by the intake, which makes it really easy. Next, I got started on removing the fuel filter itself. It's in a relatively convenient location, but it's still tight quarters and kind of hard to fit a wrench in there. I would recommend having rags ready to go because despite trying to get all the fuel out of the lines, there'll definitely be some more left over and the filter itself was pretty full too. So I got the top line off and plugged the end so nothing got in there and then I moved to the bottom one. It was hard to get it too, so I ended up just removing the fuel pump bracket with two 10 millimeter bolts, which gave me a ton more room to move the filter around and get the bottom hose off. I also zip tied the harness that runs right through there up to the strut brace because it just kept getting right in my way. Sorry for the bad angle and my big head getting in the way, but here I finally get the bottom line off. I had a rag ready to go underneath, which caught most of the fuel, and I plugged the top hole with my finger to try and slow down how fast it was leaking out. I didn't really plan ahead or know what to do with it at this point, so in hindsight, I should have emptied it into my oil storage container, but instead I chose a red Solo cup. Yeah. Okay, out with the old, in with the new. This looks like it's a, an EcoGuard fuel filter from Amazon. I just looked it up. And then this is, of course, the ISR fuel filter. They look around the same size. The ISR one's actually a little bit smaller, but regardless, let's get the new one and back in the car. So I fumbled with getting the lines on for a little bit, but it actually went a lot easier than I was expecting. I'm not sure why I did this, but <laughs> I uh, bolted the bracket back to the car before tightening down the bottom clamp, which made it a little more difficult to snug up. Without the bracket on, you actually have a good amount of space in there for your hands. So the top one went on really easy, and it was time to test for leaks. Well dang, time flies, but uh, I got a call for today. Got this in, tested it a couple times, got good pressure as you just saw. Um, I'm gonna pick up tomorrow with the rest of the spark plugs and checking timing and stuff. So I will see you in a minute. Okay, next up I wanna focus on the throttle position sensor. We'll be using a voltmeter to measure the voltage that the sensor is giving when the throttle is fully closed and also when it's wide open. So I just use this paper clip folded it up and then left this little ring so that I can use the probe and just kind of like drop it in there and forget about it. So we'll take this paper clip, we'll pin into this middle pin here, and that's where we'll be looking for our voltages. For this red top SR20 at fully closed, we're looking for around 0.45 volts. Okay, so you can see that my probe is plugged into the second hole here. The car is on, it's not running, but it's on. And the multimeter is reading voltage. I have it on the 20 setting. 
So now if I touch a ground, you can see that it, right now it reads just under 0.5 volts, 0 0.48, 0 0.49, it kind of jumps around. Um, so it's within the range, but it's a tiny bit high. I'm trying to get this idle perfect. So I'm gonna try and adjust the throttle position sensor to get it right down to 0.45. Okay, to adjust the throttle position sensor, you will loosen up these two bolts here, they're seven millimeters, and then we can spin the sensor itself. And we'll just spin it I'm not sure if it's clockwise or counterclockwise yet, but until our voltmeter reads 0.45 volts. Then we'll tighten them down, recheck, make sure it's still 0.45, and then we'll be good to go. Okay, so we got it grounded. You can see it's reading 0 0.49, 0 0.5. It's loose, so if I turn it clockwise, you can see it goes down. And then as I go counterclockwise, it comes back up. So we don't want it to be quite as high as it was, so we're just going to rotate it a tiny bit clockwise, 0.45, and we'll try and tighten it down right here uh, without <laughs> moving it too much. And we'll double check afterwards. Okay, sweet. Got it all tightened down. It's not moving anymore. If we ground it out, we're right at 0.45, so I'm really happy with that. Um, also, if we open up the throttle, should, like I said, get above like four and a half-ish. It's 4.15. I mean, maybe it's over four, I'm not sure. I'm just happy about the idle being 0.45. That's, uh, that's what exactly I was going for. Okay, sweet. Next is the spark plug. So I took off the cover and then removed the coil packs. You can see that the first coil pack has some coins wrapped in duct tape on top of it to keep it seated on the spark plug. The little bolt holding it down sheared off, so the previous owner did that as a temporary solution. When I remove the valve cover someday, I will try to extract it or drill it out. Okay, cool. We'll go out with the old and in with the new here. Uh, I'm just happy to see that they had the same ones that I'm putting in. BKR7EIX and I got the same ones about to go in so I'm just going to double check the gap and then I'll install them quick. Throwing these back in is super easy on a straight four banger like this a little less so on the uh, Subaru box engine I had in my last car. Biggest thing is just make sure to always install them hand tight at first to avoid cross threading then you can tighten them the rest of the way with your wrench. Now for the timing. I was kind of dreading doing this and I'll be honest, I'm dreading explaining this part of the video because I don't really understand it as well as I'd like to. I was worried to do it because the car runs really well right now with some very minor and intermittent hiccups, but I really just wanted to see what the timing was set to regardless. Because it has a relocated battery to the rear, it was a little janky, but with some jumper cables, I got the timing light hooked up and connected the sensor part of it to the first spark plug wire. The way that these lights work is it detects the electric pulse getting sent to the first coil pack, and when it sees it, it tells the light to flash. You check the crank pulley and see where the needle lines up relative to the timing marks. It's fairly easy to see in the video, but it's much easier to see in real life without having to deal with the camera shutter affecting the flash and whatnot. We're aiming for the second hash mark from the right, which is 15 degrees of timing. The engine was a good bit retarded, which was my first point of confusion. The further left on the hash marks that we go, the more retarded the timing is, and the further right, the more advanced it is. So you can see that as I turn the cam angle sensor, the idle is changing up and down, and I can see that the timing needle is moving left and right relative to the hash marks. It would have been really hard to get a camera in there without having three hands, so I didn't get a chance to show you it moving in real time. I unplugged the throttle position sensor when I did this because that's what someone said online. Uh, I also saw a video where to get it into timing mode, you're supposed to rev the engine three times over 3,000 RPM, but I didn't do that. I'm really just kind of confused on the whole process and whether I even did anything permanent because I went and double checked the next day and it looks like the timing is set back to almost exactly where it was before. Maybe I should have revved the engine a couple times before. In this next clip, you can see that when I unplug the idle air control valve, the idle actually drops a little bit and the engine sounds a little happier. It's 
still has a high idle, which I would expect it to when it's not using the idle air control valve, but sure does sound good. Though. Okay, that was it for this video. Uh, hopefully you guys found it helpful. I know it wasn't very instructional, but hopefully seeing someone else do it, make some mistakes, um, can help you, you know, with your project. But did the fuel filter, um, that went pretty well. Did the throttle position sensor, I'm really happy with that. I was able to get it really dialed in to right at 0.45. The spark plugs, the old ones didn't look super bad, but um, it's just, you know, it feels good to have new stuff in there that I know is brand new. Um, and then the timing with the timing light, that was really scaring me. Um, the engine runs good. It idles, it drives well, um, it pulls hard. So I'm really reluctant to change anything, but it was off a lot. You could see that in the video. Um, it was very retarded. So um, once when I loosened up the bolts, it like went to full advanced and I was like, oh my God, this engine was idling up. I was freaking out. I was able to get it back down. Um, now it's set to 15 degrees, uh, which is you know the, the stock setting. So whew, hopefully I didn't do any damage. Hopefully everything works good. It was making some really scary noises last night, but came out here today, started up, got it up to operating temperature, and it seems to be uh, idling good. It still has a very high idle. Um, unfortunately, uh, which tells me that the idle air control valve is bad. Uh, if you unplug it, basically doesn't change anything. Um, if anything, it idles a little bit better. <laughs> um, so it's that's next on the list. I think you have to remove the intake manifold, which I don't really want to do. Um, but if there's a way of doing it without taking off the intake manifold, I'm going to try and do that. Um, but yeah, I think once I do that, it should idle really, really well now that I've ironed out the thrall position and the timing. So I'll stop rambling. Thanks so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.